to be early. In games like this, the first couple of minutes can sometimes be a little rough, a little ugly, just because the adrenaline's flowing. You want it so badly. You're so amped up. But both these teams are so experienced, and they've been here. Kent State was here a year ago. Akron is a great team year in, year out. So both these teams, very senior-heavy teams, because we have a lost shoe there to start the game. Maybe not a great omen for the, the Kent State Golden Flashes, but just got to play through the nerves first couple minutes, let everybody calm down, and we'll play some basketball. Kent State throws the ball into the second row after winning the tip. It's maybe some nerves right there out of the mm. gate on that pass. It's a little bit high. Toledo will go with the same starting five. Neither team is very deep. They might go a couple guys into the bench. Toledo starting five is loaded. Ray J. Dennis, the player of the year. JT Shoemate, a do-everything big man. Dante Maddox, Cedric Milner, also double-figure scorers. Losing it under the basket. In amongst the trees, Raheem Moss hit the bottom of the rim, gets it back, and scores in a foul. And maybe not quite how Todd Kowalczyk drew it up first play of the game, but Raheem Moss just staying with it. Got trapped there, thought he may be in jeopardy of a three-second count. But did a smart thing here. Instead of trying to force it out, he said, you know what? I'm going to just go up with it. It hit the rim. Three-second count to reset, and then goes right back up. Scores, chance of a three-point play. Way to stay with the play. Myron Thomas, the foul for ball uh, for uh, Kent State, I should say. His first. He is a Ball State transfer. That's where Hayne Moss completes the three-point play. Our officials tonight, Chad Barlow, Chris Beaver, and Bill Eck. This is Sincere Carey, Kent State's leading scorer. He is Batman to Malik Jacobs Robin. Malik Jacobs, their second leading scorer and the MAC Defensive Player of the Year. Jacobs scores. And Malik Jacobs, not necessarily a great three-point shooter, more of a mid-range guy, did a great time on that job. Just taking what the defense gave, drove in the lane. Good job avoiding the charge. Myron Thomas had a huge game yesterday against Akron, a season-high 24. Long shot is up and in for Cedric Milner. And what makes this Toledo team so dangerous is they have four guys in double figures, four guys shooting over 50% on the season. That is almost unheard of. They can beat you in so many different ways. And this is what they do better than most people give them credit for. They are a very, very good defensive team. Dante Maddox, the interception on the pass. Long three, Maddox. Off the back iron, rebounded by Thomas. Both teams like to get up and down the court. Even though Kent State scores a lot fewer points than Toledo does, as Myron Thomas quick three is no good. Milner on the run for the Rockets. Milner averages 16 a game. Here's a three, and it's up and in for Dante Maddox. Maybe a little bit quick the possession before that for Maddox, but that time in rhythm, threw it inside to Milner. A little post split action came around, and that is the one guy, especially in white, that you cannot leave open. Number 21, Dante Maddox. He's going to make you pay more times than not. Jacobs takes it to the rim. Tipped up and in by Myron Thomas. That was one of the concerns coming into this game for Todd Kowalczyk was the backboard. Gave up, got out rebounded, excuse me, by 14 last night to Ohio. Gave up 20 offensive rebounds, so certainly something to keep an eye on in this game. Ray J. Dennis rebounded by Thomas, and it's out of bounds to Kent State. Both teams 27 and 6. Toledo won the regular season 16 and 2. Kent State was second, 15 and 3. Toledo has won 17 in a row since losing to Kent State at Kent. 75-63 back on January 10th. That was the last time they lost two months ago. But that was the only meeting between the two schools this year. Quick three. And out of bounds to Toledo. And a lot of times there's so much familiarity when you get to the conference championship game because you normally play each other most leagues twice. But it's kind of strange. These two teams have only played once this year, and that was about two months ago. So a lot can change in that two-month span. They still know each other very well, obviously, but look for some different wrinkles that each team has not seen from one another. In that game, Toledo scored 63 points, by far the fewest points they've scored this season. They average 86 a game, second in the country. Here's Shoemate. Nice move. Couldn't get the finish, and the rebound comes away to the Golden Flashes, Myron Thomas. Carey, long three. Rebound, Ray J. Dennis. Down the lane, Milner. Defended well, but a foul. And a 
great bounce pass that time by Ray J. Dennis. They are a very opportunistic transition team. Will certainly get out and run when they have the opportunity to do so. But just a great bounce pass on the run, right in stride. You see the contact there on the arm by Davis. Milner going to line for two shots. Zetrick Milner has been on a real tear of late. Shooting well over 50% from three over his last six. And the free throws are such an important part of what Toledo does. They have made two more free throws than their opponents have attempted all season. They average about 21 free throw attempts a game. Well, not only that, they're shooting 77% mm -hmm. as a team. Right. So if you get into close games, especially in March, that is such a weapon to have. You have all the confidence in the world, all your guys on the court can go to the free throw line and knock it down. That 77% is top 20 in the country. So if you're putting them at the line, it's not a good thing. It's almost an automatic two points right. every time. Toledo to the quick start. Sincere carry just that one shot so far. Here's Jacobs. He's wide open. Sincere carry the three. It's good. And Sincere carry is going to make most of those if he has that much time. A great job by Myron Thomas. Had a chance to shoot a three. Didn't settle. Drove in the lane. The dribble penetration. They do such a great job with their spacing. And if Sincere carry gets his feet set and has that much time, he's going to knock most of them down. Started his career at Duquesne. Second year at Kent State. Almost 2,000 career points as Jacobs sends it out of bounds. Sends us to a timeout. Dribble penetration is where it starts for Kent State. Passed up to OK shot. Just an unbelievable offensive team. But I mentioned it earlier. They are better defensively than people give them credit for. I mean, they, they have to, to win 17 games in a row. I don't care what league you're playing in. That is so hard to do. And we were talking about before the game. Three in a row is tough. Yeah, at some point you're bound to slip up, and they just have not done so. Dennis short on the three. Carry the long rebound. Here's Malik Jacobs, likes to attack the basket. Guarded by Milner, pulls up from 16. Long rebound, tapped out to Milner. Oh, and a, and a Kent State player is down, hurt behind the play. He's hurt behind the play, grabbing his ankle. Five on four here for Toledo. Dennis the three. In and out, offensive rebound by Farmer. And that player who was down got up and ran back into the play as if nothing was wrong. I think it was Chris Payton. Kent State very fortunate there with that five-on-four situation. Ray J. Dennis got a wide-open look, just was able to knock it down. Let's hope that Chris Payton is okay. Seems to be favoring that ankle pretty heavily. And he is down underneath the basket now. Chris Payton, a transfer from Pittsburgh. I didn't see what happened, uh, but he was in some traffic running up the court. Oh, Ooh, yeah, just the, the, yep, right there on the floor and Tell you what having done that too many times over the course of my career That is the first two minutes of that is some of the most excruciating pain you'll ever experience but Good sign to see him jogging back towards the locker room So maybe he'll be able to go get retaped and come back into this game yeah, He ran with some purpose into the locker room and they'll retape him up there in the meantime Claron Hornbeek has checked in for Kent State Jacobs falls to the ground. Jalen Sullinger has also checked in for the Golden Flashes. And I believe it was a jump ball. No, it was a foul. Yeah, I think they're going to get Raheem Moss on the foul here. Diving on the uh, diving on the floor. You got to love the hustle with the NCAA tournament berth on the line. Needless to say, yeah, you can't dive right on top of the back of somebody else. Kent so State keeps it underneath. Raheem Moss picks up his first foul. Another player goes down and loses his shoe. It's Myron Thomas. Sullinger in the lane. Floats it up and in. So Jalen Sullinger, the sixth man of the year in the MAC this year. Great three-point shooter. Instant offense off the bench. You see it right there. Comes in, first possession. Gets in the lane, scores two. Thomas a little slow getting back on defense as he was putting his shoe back on. Kent State is the top defensive team in the league. They lead the league in... Field goal percentage defense as well as points allowed and three-point percentage defense. So 
immovable force against, or unstoppable force against the immovable object, right? As Moss easily to the rim. And that time Hornbeck just got, excuse me, Hornbeck got caught on the switch, just unable to stay in front of the smaller and quicker Moss. Great job that time at the end of the shot clock, too. Not settling for the three. Was able to get to the rim and lay it in. Carey zigzagging through traffic. A.J. Adu has checked in for Toledo. Carey pulls up and is fouled. It's on Ray J. Dennis, his first. You mentioned it earlier, depth could be a problem for both of these teams, but especially Toledo. They only play about six guys. So foul trouble is certainly something to keep an eye on, but we see here Sincere Carey. Yeah, just enough of the wrist there. And if you're Ray J. Dennis, just go straight up. No need to even put the decision in the hands of the officials that time. Carey obviously a great free throw shooter. Don't want to send him to the line, get him going. Subs in, JT Shoemate, along with Dante Maddox for Toledo. Shoemate, a do-it-all big man, averaging 16 points a game, also second in the league in blocks, shooting 54% from the field, 41 from three, and 87 from the line. A strong offensive force. Carey makes them both. Penn State has never led in this game. Dennis splits a double. Dennis floats it up. Pulled, up, pulled the string on it. Rebounded by Jacobs. Penn State running two on one. Jacobs for a Hornby cool. Leaves it in. What a great catch by Claron Hornby on the run in traffic. Had three guys around him. I believe Jacobs almost got caught in the air and had no choice but to drop it off. But just a great job on the catch. Oh, what a look to Farmer who lays it in. And another shoe coming up for one of the Kent State players. What is going on? That is the third time a Kent State player has lost a shoe. This time Hornby. Carey pulls up for three. Dennis the rebound. Dennis can shoot the three, but loves getting to the rim. He'll shoot the three. Out of bounds to Kent State. And not the shot that Todd Kowalczyk probably wanted right there. Not You mentioned it. Not that Ray J. Dennis can't shoot the three, but he is at his best. Getting in the lane. Great mid-range jump shooter. If you take a look, Malik Jacobs, Jacobs almost got caught in the air there, but just a great catch and finish. Great body control there. Great hands. Kent State will look to push it on the break at any opportunity they can get. Here's Jacobs on shoemate. Jacobs pulling his way to the rim, and he was out of bounds. There's Payton getting ready to check back into the game. Good sign there. Looks like that ankle is going to be okay, but a great move there by Malik Jacobs, just unable to stay in bounds. But the quickness of Malik Jacobs makes him a matchup problem offensively. We see Kent State here looking to pick up full court a little bit, maybe change the tempo of this game, see if they can get a couple turnovers from the Rockets. Kent State thrives on forcing turnovers. Top 20 nationally, forcing over 16 a game. Toledo, top 10 nationally, only commit about 10 a game. So that's going to be, again, two strengths meeting up with each other. Carey and Dennis, pounding bodies. Dennis fade away. It's good. He makes that look so easy. That is a really, really difficult shot falling away like that. He's almost like... <laughs> untraditional post-up type of guard. Was the 15, 16, 17 foot range. Back to down. Just hit that little fadeaway over the top of you. First two of the game for Dennis. Left right corner three is good. Von Cameron Davis, who had really struggled shooting the ball in this tournament, knocks down his first shot. And that is a very, very welcome sign for Rob Senderoff's team. Von Cameron Davis only shooting 23% on the season coming into this game. Not a strength of his, but knocking down that first one and give him a little bit of confidence. And one out of eight in the first two games from beyond the arc. Farmer driving baseline, and he was out of bounds. Good start here, under 12 timeout, with Toledo and Kent State tied at 16. A lot of offensive action so far. Tonight, so far, pretty quiet in that statistical category. 
Tied up at 16 as we resume play with Jalen Sullinger bringing it into the front court for Kent State. Nip and tuck throughout. Toledo got off to a strong start. Kent State has rallied. Carey going on one on one with Shoemate. Find Cameron Davis buries the three. Their confidence is an amazing, amazing thing. You mentioned they were one for eight in the first two games, only shooting 23% on the season. Knocks down that first shot. Now all of a sudden that basket looks a lot bigger. He's got six points. He averages six and a half a game. Andre Lorenzen has checked in for Toledo. We welcome those of you who've been watching the American semis between Memphis and Tulane. We're here in Cleveland, Ohio, Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. The top two teams in the MAC. Von Cameron Davis, another three is no good. It has been Toledo and Kent State going at it, and Kent State has taken its biggest lead of the game. That's Emily Jacobs out rebounding the Toledo team, was outnumbered down there by about two or three. Somehow came up with it. Kent State here over these last couple minutes has found a momentum offensively. Robert Lee, David Patchett, our entire crew with you from the land. As Milner pounded, throws it away and out of bounds. How did these teams get to this point? The quarterfinals were blowouts. Toledo routed Miami. Kent State beat Northern Illinois. All four Ohio teams in the semifinals. Toledo held off OU. Kent State beat its arch rival and the defending champion Akron to reach this point. These are clearly the top two teams in the league. Toledo has won 17 straight. Kent, five in a row, nine of their last ten. And both teams have very impressive 27 and 6 records. They met once this season about two months ago. Kent State won that game. It was the last time Toledo lost. Terry missed the shot. Long rebound run down by Milner. Doesn't have numbers. Will attack anyways. And now we'll reset with Dante Maddox. Good decision there by Milner of not forcing the issue that time. But you see Kent State has really picked up the intensity on the defensive end. And Peyton turns away Maddox there. Kent State has numbers. Jacobs, alley-oop. Oh, Mets at the rim and foul. JT Shoemate the foul prevented the dunk. Kent State, one of the things they do best, turning defense into offense. You see Chris Payton on the one end with a great block. On the other end, running the floor, getting rewarded for it. Malik Jacobs with a great lob pass and a good foul there by JT Shoemate. I think Chris Payton is going to throw that one down and get this crowd really going. He had some bad intentions. The transfer from Pittsburgh missed the first free throw. Julius Rollins checks in for Kent State. First appearance for the sophomore from Chicago. Two points a game. Peyton, a senior, barely played at Pitt last year, putting up solid numbers for Kent State and makes one out of two for his first point of the game. He turned his ankle earlier in the game, went back into the locker room, got it taped up. He is back, although he goes to the bench now for Myron Thomas. And Kent State, these last couple possessions, has really turned it up on the defensive end with their hand activity, just making it really difficult for Toledo to get into any kind of set. That time just a little too aggressive there with the foul. The two players to look for amongst many, but the real star power lies in the last two MAC players of the year. No question. And sincere carry, a season ago, player of the year in the MAC. Ray J. Dennis this year with the unanimous player of the year. Don't see that very often. Both these guys have been playing against each other for a long time, know each other very well. And I love the fact that they're matched up mm. against each other on both ends of the court. Sometimes you don't see that. These guys are not afraid to go at it. Dennis turns it over. Thomas heading in uncontested for the jam. There is a big crowd here at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Both these teams within two hours. Kent State only about 45 minutes away. Toledo two hours west on I-90. Crowd roaring for Kent State. Dennis one-on-one -on -one with Carey. Star matchup, pounding bodies. Milner the three. Rebounded by Sullinger. 
And great job that time by Sincere Carey of holding his ground in the post against Ray J. Dennis, looking to explode the roof off of this place on this possession. Behind the back, Myron Thomas to three. He got it. Toledo timeout. You can certainly feel the energy in this building, and it seems like a little bit more of a pro Kent State crowd, but it has been absolutely electric in here. And Kent State has fed off of that energy, really ratcheting up their defense, going on a great run here over the last couple minutes to kind of open up this game so far midway through this first half. Toledo comes in on a 17-game winning streak since they lost the Kent State. Very difficult shot for Milner. I'm not sure you can play much better defense that time than Myron Thomas did. A ball away over an outstretched arm, but Toledo will take it in any way they can get it. But Toledo's going to have to put together a couple stops here. Kent State shoot 56% so far here in this first half. What's at stake for these teams? A berth in the NCAA tournament. Toledo has not gone since 1980. They won the first ever MAC tournament and have never won it again. As Von Cameron Davis picks up the foul 90 feet from the basket. 43 years, and the Rockets have been good. This was their third straight outright regular season title for Coach of the Year, Todd Kowalczyk. They lost in the semis each of the last two years. They've made it to the final. They're trying to get to the promised land. It's so hard. It is just so hard in these one-bid leagues because of the pressure. I mean, mm. the job that Todd Kowalczyk has done since he's taken over at Toledo has been remarkable. I mean, they are at the top of the league every year, and it just comes down to three games in three straight days in March. It is just so difficult to do. He feels confident about his team. He's got a great team this year. A lot of time left in this basketball game. Milner will trigger the three. It's good. Three. Nine points for Cedric Milner. Milner. The thing about Toledo is they're just so composed. They don't get rattled. They got down 11. They came out of the timeout, went on a little 5 0 run right there, got a couple stops. Now all of a sudden it's a six point game. They're right back in this. Jacobs working his way to the rim, leaves it for Peyton who will flush it. And that's what the dribble penetration does with the spacing. We saw early on in this game, they were kicking it out for threes. Naturally, the defense is going to start to get extended. So what does that do? It leaves the basket wide open, and that time Peyton able to flush it down for the easy two. Firmer falls to the ground. The ball is kicked to Maddox. Still 12 to shoot. Milner feeling it. Milner drives baseline, hangs in the air, and draws the foul. This is what Toledo likes to do. They love to get to the free throw line. They're one of the best 20 free throw shooting teams by percentage in the country. And they have attempted, they have made more free throws than their opponents have attempted this season. It's certainly a weapon, a team that shoots 77%. It's just every time they go to the free throw line, it almost seems like it's an automatic two. But Cedric Milner has done a great job of just not settling. We saw him knock the three down, but that time late shot clock, Natural tendency is to just force one up. He said, I'm going to try to get to the rim and get fouled. Champ Week rolls on at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific over on ESPN with the Pac-12 championship game. Big one, Arizona squares off against UCLA. It's also available on the ESPN app. These two teams split their meetings this season. The number one seed is in play. UCLA, a team that seems to be... Trying to find a way to stay healthy. The job Nick Cronin has done with his team this year, unbelievable. Arizona, a team that's going to be really hard to beat. Neutral site in Las Vegas. That should be a great atmosphere, especially on a Saturday night. Milner makes one out of two. He's into double figures on the 15th game in a row. He averages 16 points a game. And we see for the first time Toledo going to their 1-2-2 two, two full court pressure. Not so much looking to turn you over. They'll gladly take one, but looking to just slow you down, buy some time in the backcourt. That time a foul with A.J. Adu. It's his first. Not into the bonus yet. When these teams met the first time this season, it was the fewest points Toledo had scored, has scored all season. They scored 63 points. They lost by 12. They've only been under, that's the only time they've been under 69 points all season. So it's by far their fewest points of the year. They have only 22 right now. Nice hands by Dennis, who creates the steal. Farmer running the floor. Offensive foul. Pretty easy call that time. DJ Farmer trying to be aggressive. You got to like it. Forced to steal, trying to get out in the open court. 
But the defense here the last couple of minutes has been the story. Great hands there by Ray J. Dennis on the slap down. And EJ Farmer, you got it one on one, you gotta like it, but Sincere Curry clearly there with his feet set outside the circle. That's gonna be a charge ten times out of ten. Overall, Kent State has beaten Toledo three times in a row, as well as six of the last eight. So even though Toledo's been a dominant team, Kent State's had their number a bit as Kerry has turned away at the rim. Kerry, good hustle, saves it for Hornby. Fresh 20. Jacobs, offensive foul. Malik Jacobs, his first. A great job that time by Dante Maddox, who's moving his feet. Making Malik Jacobs change direction and back-to-back -back offensive fouls here. Team's getting a little, little out of sorts here offensively, but you see Malik Jacobs loves to go to his right hand, his strong hand. That time Maddox did a great job of making him change direction, beat him to the spot. Good call by the official going down the other way. Salino has stepped the tide a bit. They look to get it going back on offense. Milner has been the hot hand. He's got 10. Dennis with only two. Milner, tough shot again. Hit the side of the backboard. Good fight by Adu for the rebound, but it comes away to Jacobs. Carey on the run. That's the ball on a string. Carey attacks the rim. It's missed the shot, but it's tipped in. I that guy's going to be close to an offensive goaltending there, but you see the quickness of sincere Carey. He's got such a great handle. You said it. He's got that ball on a string. And with his first step quickness, it's just so hard to contain off the dribble. Just a, a really, really explosive athlete. They gave that bucket to Carey. That's Milner with a nice finish. He's got 12. Cedric Milner has been the bright spot offensively for the Rockets so far here in this first half, especially with JT Shoemate on the bench. And Todd Kowalczyk really wanted a foul there offensively on Sincere Carey. We didn't get the call. We play on. Really letting him play here as we come up on four minutes left in the first half. Sullinger turned away by a two. Milner a bounce pass ahead for Maddox. Toledo two on one. Milner stop and pop. Bang! Cedric Milner, 15 points. Kent State timeout. Cedric Milner having a... At about the eight-minute mark, but Toledo on an 11-4 run, powered by Cedric Milner Jr., 15 points right at his season average. And a heat check right before that last timeout on the break there, forced that timeout by Kent State, but it has been all Cedric Milner. Ray J. Dennis, quiet first half so far, but give Kent State defense credit for that. Jacobs spin move. Jacobs up and under. Good fight for the rebound. Jacobs has got it. Defended well again by Shoemate. Jacobs a third opportunity. Jacobs under the basket, kicks it out for Carey. Two on the shot clock. Carey hoists it up. Does hit the rim. And it's out of bounds to Toledo. I think they're going to change the call. It'll go over to Kent State. So good job getting the ball up on the rim by Carey. Yeah, great recognition there that time on the shot clock. But Kent State just hitting the offensive backboard. And Toledo, we mentioned it. Yep. Very fortunate in their win last night. Got out rebounded 43 29. Gave up 20 offensive rebounds to Ohio. So the backboard has been a concern. And so far here in the last couple minutes, Kent State making a pay. Fortunate for Toledo that time, not able to convert, but they do retain possession. Shot clock again, running down low. Six on the shot clock. Myron Thomas with three. Throws it out of bounds. A great rotation that time by JT Shoemate. Myron Thomas had a lane to the basket. JT Shoemate stepped up, forced that turnover, but Toledo playing with fire there a little bit, given Kent State that many looks at the rim. They're going to have to shore up the backboard. They want to have a chance to take this lead. Turnovers have been such a big part of Kent State's success this season. In the corner, double clutch. Inside Shoemate, who has not scored. They get it to Milner. There's Raheem Moss rejected by Chris Payton, who shakes his head. Kent State is doing an unbelievable job on their scramble rotations. Toledo has them in a scramble defensively. The ball's moving. Great help. You see the closeout, hands high. Just all over the place defensively are the golden flashes. Four to shoot. Moss will try it again and score. Three. 
All right, and it's deflating for Kent State right there. They played about 27 seconds of great defense. Where he must just making a pay at the end of the shot clock. And Toledo with all the momentum here over the last six or seven minutes. Rocket fans roaring on an 8-0 run. What a move by Carey. Las Vegas saw this as a pick -em. Neither team was favored. And you know this one's going to come down to the wire. Two minutes to go first half. The intensity level has really picked up the last couple minutes here in this game. And Toledo going to go to the free throw line here as Kent State now is in the bonus. But you're right. There's a reason this game. Nobody knew who was going to win. I mean, number one team in the league, number two team in the league, 27-6. We see a great move here by the sincere carry with the reverse layup on the left hand. A good idea here by Chris Payton. And I have a feeling when Rob Senderoff sees that one after the game on replay, he's not going to be very happy about that call. May have been a fortunate break there for the Rockets. And Ray J. Dennis has a foul, so that could have been his second foul. Instead, it's the second on Payton. As Dennis, the MAC Player of the Year, averaged over 19 points a game and almost six assists per game to lead the league. Has only three points so far. Friendly bounce on both. And has four points now for the junior from Plainfield, Illinois. Just outside of Chicago. Second year after transfer from Boise State. Sullinger, corner three. Strong rebound by Milner. Rockets on the run. Milner, stop and pop. Came up short. Carey runs down the rebound in the corner. Now Kent State's got numbers. Malik Jacobs the other way in a track meet. Jacobs. Lost the rebound. Good job by Toledo those last couple possessions of limiting Kent State to one shot. Curious to see here. Those free throws by Ray J. Dennis on that last time down when he got fouled, if that gets him going offensively. Sometimes it helps you to see the ball go through the rim when you're struggling. Cedric Miller has been the guy with the hot hand. See if they can get somebody else going besides Miller. Shoemate has not scored. He averages 16 a game. Moss couldn't hit the three. Peyton the rebound, final 45 seconds. Both teams have already used the timeout this half. Toledo has a foul to give. Carey step back three. By Toledo, a foul on Peyton. It'll be his third wrong place at the wrong time. And the Kent State fans not happy whatsoever with that sequence right there. They thought Toledo got away with a push on the rebound. No call on the push here. Chris Payton trying to run back down the court. Just wasn't paying attention. Was looking at the referee and just ran right over Ray J. Dennis. So an unfortunate break there for... The Kent State fans let the officials know about it, but a, a very good call. I mean, Ray J. Dennis just got trampled there and going back to the free throw line with a chance to take the lead here with 34 seconds before the half. Julius Rollins who only plays about nine minutes a game back in for Peyton, who's got three fouls. Dennis to the line. And ties the game. As you can see, only a four-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. So Kent State can virtually hold for the final shot. Well, a couple guys on the floor for Toledo do have one foul, but Todd Kowalczyk elected to leave him on the court. You see Ray J. Dennis's numbers this season, the MAC Player of the Year. Almost 20 a game and led the league in assists as well as assist-to-turnover ratio. Toledo takes the lead. Final 30 seconds. State loves this horns look and what is that? Toledo had a foul to give. That's only their 16th foul, so but still I'm not sure why you do it. They were clearly gonna wait till the last shot. And I think the bench let them know. <laughs> a completely unnecessary foul there, even though it does not put them at the line. If they get fouled here, now they go to the line. Maddox only his first. We see the horns look here by Kent State. They love this horns look, come off one side, pop on the other. Bunch of different things they can do out of this, but Sincere Carey is going to keep the ball in his hands right here. Only about a one-second difference now. Myron 
and Thomas the three. Well off the mark. Jacobs the rebound. Four seconds left. Lost it out of bounds to Kent State with three seconds remaining. Toledo fans obviously saw something they didn't like right there. Tough to see from our angle who that went off, but it looks like Kent State's going to keep the ball underneath. As we take a look here. Oh, yeah, Malik Jacobs definitely touched that basketball. And you can see why Dante Maddox is so upset right there, along with the Toledo fans, but nonetheless, can't review until the last two minutes of the basketball game, so Kent State going to keep it here. That's where that foul may come in handy right here. Chance to take the lead going into the half. Three for Myron Thomas, and air ball put back up and in. Malik Jacobs gives the Golden Flashes the lead at the half. Vegas thought it was a toss-up. It was in the first 20 minutes. As Malik Jacobs, the putback of the Thomas air ball. Yeah, that quick first step. He was able to get himself to the rim, but, uh, you know, not a, not the prettiest first half, but still a great high-intensity first half. Neither of the stars, Sincere Carey or Ray J. Dennis, played as well as they're used to. Ray J. Dennis, one out of six from the field, did most of his damage from the free-throw line. He starts the second half with the ball. Toledo in the white jerseys, the number one seed. Kent State in the gold jerseys, popping free. Maddox comes up well short on the three, and it's rebounded by Myron Thomas. Toledo has won 17 games in a row since they lost to Kent State in January. Winner goes to the NCAA tournament. Toledo hasn't made it since 1980. Kent State looking to go for the first time in six years and the seventh time overall in school history. Malik Jacobs to the rim, flips it up, came up short, gets it back. And saved back in bounds to Toledo. The rebounding has to improve for the Rockets. No question about it. We talked about it at halftime. You see JT Shoemate trying to be aggressive right out of the gate after a scoreless first half. But Toledo playing with fire a little bit on the backboard. Gave up eight offensive rebounds in the first half. Gave up another one right there. Kent State just unable to convert. But Toledo's going to have to do a better job on the backboard. Perry in the double Perry. figures. He's got 11. He's been in double figures every game this season except for three. Extends the lead. Kent State led by as much as 11 in the first half. Toledo by six at one point. It was a 14-0 run for Kent State that really turned the tide as a player is on the ground still, but he does get out Malik Jacobs after Shoemate was turned away. Shot clock didn't reset here. Step back three, Maddox. Tough shot. Wow, Dante Maddox has six points. Just the way Taco Altrick drew it up, right? A step back three with four seconds on the shot clock. But a much-needed basket there for the Rockets. Myron Thomas, the Cleveland native, banks it off last and in. Myron, I was really, really impressed last night watching Myron Thomas. Had a big-time game in the semifinal there against Akron. Just a great player. Could shoot for three, very under control. Could post up smaller guards. You see there the skill work. Nice little bank shot off the glass. Went to high school at Central Catholic about four miles from here. Foul on Davis for Kent State, his third. We talked a lot about the matchup between these two guards coming in. We've seen Carey here, just nice little step back, great that separation. And that's where he is so dangerous with the touch. And this time, even though Dante Maddox stepped back three, knew he had to shoot it at the end of the shot clock, but a much-needed basket to get his team back within it. Goes to the free throw line with a little bit of an unconventional miss there for the Rockets. Dante Maddox is the best three-point shooter in the MAC, 46%. What does Toledo have to do to get JT Shoemate involved? Well, they tried to run a little ISO play for him right the last time down, get him a little post-up action, and got his shot blocked. But you know, it's when you when you have a scoreless first half where you struggled offensively, the last thing you want to try to do is necessarily force it. But he's a smart player. He's been around way too long. He's not going to force the issue. He'll just take what what, they, what uh, the defense allows him to do. Only Jenkins the score on the foul. And it just has kind of been, I know there's 17 minutes left in this basketball game, but it has just been a frustrating first 20 plus minutes for JT Shoemate. Can't get going into anything offensively. Then picks up the foul here, trying to guard Malik Jacobs, just gets to the line. Chance for the old fashioned three point play. Shoemate, second foul, a first team all max selection this year. Jacobs missed the free throw, rebounded by Maddox. 
Milner was the hot hand for Toledo in the first half of 15 points. He wears the number four. Shoemake, quick three. He's fouled. And maybe that'll get him going as Jacobs just picked up a second. We mentioned it earlier in the first half. With Ray J. Dennis was struggling from the field. Got to the free throw line. Got himself going a little bit. Just got to see that ball go through the hoop. And we see here, J.T. Shoemake had shot on his mind the entire time right there and you like the aggressive closeout by Malik Jacobs but you just got to go by him can't even risk the contact there JT Shoemate with a chance for three shots here maybe get that confidence going a little bit offensively he is an 87 percent free throw shooter our ESPN Sunday NBA matchup has 80 in the Lakers hosting Julius Randle and the Knicks our coverage tips at 9 Eastern 6 Pacific Knicks fifth place in the East Lakers are in ninth in the West just four weeks left in the regular season. Could be a great matchup out west as Shoemate scores his first three points of the game. We'll see if that gets him going. A transfer from Division II Walsh University. Shoemate's sister, Katie, was an all mac player, a senior on Kent State's women's team this year. Raising the question, who is Katie rooting for tonight? I could have to guess that she's probably rooting for her brother, but you never know. Malik Jacobs starting to feel it. He's got 10. Kent okay. State has done a really good job in this game of handling the ball screen traps. Early on, last couple of possessions, especially Toledo has been aggressive in trapping sincere carry off the ball screens. He's not forcing the issue, just taking what the defense has given him. And Malik Jacobs found himself wide open that time, able to knock it down. Milner trying to get on the board in the second half. He's fouled. It's on Jacobs. It's his third. So the Mac Defensive Player of the Year now has three fouls. We were talking at halftime about what each team was going to have to do in the second half. And I, I wrote down, Kent State's going to have to defend without fouling. That was the reason why Toledo was able to stay in the game in that first half is they got to the free throw line nine times. And so far here already in the first three minutes of the second half, they're right back again. So Kent State's got to find a way to keep defending aggressively, but do so without fouling. And now Von Cameron Davis, Malik Jacobs, and Chris Payton all have three fouls for Kent State. Payton is on the bench. As is Davis. And Malik Jacobs is the one guy that Rob Senderoff cannot afford to get into foul trouble right now. He's having a great game, close to a double-double. 16 now for Milner. Cuts the lead to one. Carey matched up on Dennis, the last two Mac players of the year. Mano a mano, he skips it off into the corner for Sullinger. Three on the shot clock, big three. Up and in for Myron Thomas. And give Jalen Sullinger all the credit in the world for that three right there. He was in the corner, got the reversal pass with four seconds left on the shot clock. Took that one dribble to get the defense to help, made the extra pass to a wide open Thomas knocking down the three. Thomas with 12 points, extends the lead to four. Milner attacks the rim, and before the shot goes down. So not going to be free throws, but it is another foul on Kent State. Already their fourth in the first four minutes. Champion has a great dribble penetration. Four times this half, they are five out of seven from the field. Toledo, we've sung their praises offensively. They are shooting 50% from the field for the season. Fifth in the country right now at 39%. Give Kent State a lot of credit for that. They're doing a great job of making them take tough, contested shots. There have not been many times in this game where Toledo Right on cue, has gotten a wide open look that time. Raheem Moss unable to knock it down, but Kent State has made it extremely difficult for the Rockets to get anything clean on the perimeter. Toledo averages 86 points a game. That's second in the country, only behind Gonzaga. They're also a 40% three-point shooting team, second to Colgate. And they're well below both those marks tonight. Milner. Woo. Milner has 18 Henry points. Milner. Yeah, that's an NBA type offense right there. Just isolate him on the wing, 17 feet. And with the ability to shoot the mid range jump shot like that, that is just so hard to defend. Thomas played pretty good defense. Challenge the shot. Sometimes the offense just gets a little bit more credit. Nice move to Peyton, who scores. 
Chris Hinkle. Great little back screen action right there. Miscommunication by Toledo defensively on the switch. Peyton recognized it, slipped it to the rim, and a great pass for the easy two. Leonar has carried the Rockets offensively. Moss daring him to shoot. Moss spins on Sullivan. He's fouled. So now, we, why do we keep talking about the free throws? The fouls on Sullivan is his first. Toledo is a 77% free throw shooting team. That's 16th in the country. Kent State's only got one more foul to give before they put Toledo at the line for the rest of the game. But if you look at it, Toledo's 13 of 16 from the free throw line, where Kent State's only 3 of 5. So the reason Kent State's, or excuse me, Toledo's been able to hang in this game, and a much needed three there for the Big Player of the Year, Ray J. Dennis. Maybe that'll get him going. One of the few clean looks he's had tonight, but the free throw line has kept Toledo in this basketball game. Sincere carry to the rim. Fourteen and a half to go. Winner goes to the NCAA tournament. Top two teams in the league, both 27 and 6 this year. Carey knocks down the three. There's no chance that time for AJ Duke. Got caught on the switch. Sincere Carey saw it. Had to be worried about the quickness. AJ Duke backed up. And Sincere Carey's going to knock that down two more times than not when he gets that much room. Carey leading the way for Kent State. He averages 17 a game. Here's E.J. Farmer who's checked back in. Dennis trying to get it going. Banging bodies with Carey. Knocked away by Jacobs. Look at that hustle! And it'll stay with Toledo with one on the shot clock. That's exactly right. Tough place to take the ball out of bounds right at the mid-court line. Just time for a catch and shoot here. The great hands by Malik Jacobs who has the rebounds. Mm -hmm. Got lucky there. Could have picked up that fourth, but nonetheless got the deflection and great hustle by Jalen Sollinger. But like I said, one second on the shot clock. Kent State's going to put Chris Payton all over the ball, see if he can obscure the vision to EJ Farmer. Jacobs, the defensive player of the year in the league, second in the country in steals. Dennis didn't get it off. Didn't get it off. Should be no shot. And it's a shot clock violation. Kowalczyk, the Mac coach of the year. His team's won 17 in a row. Rob Senderoff for Kent State. We asked him yet last night, what do you have on those papers that you're always holding? He said a bunch of plays that don't work. And he holds it, though. And when you got a guy like Sincere Carey, who can create at any time, sometimes you don't need plays. You just got to give your best player the ball and get out of the way. Jacobs to the basket. He's fouled. And he'll go to the line. The dribble penetration tonight has really hurt this Toledo defense. Kent State has done a great job of spacing the floor and just going one-on-one. -on -one. And because of the way some of these players for Kent State shoot the basketball, you almost are forced to stay at home. Points in the paint has just been absolutely dominated by the gold flashes. Champ Week rolls on at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific, over on ESPN with the Pac-12 championship game. Arizona against UCLA. It's also available on the ESPN app. Heavyweight matchup in Vegas. Jacobs calmly sinks two and extends the lead out to six with 13 and a half to go. Splits a double. Dennis to the rim. Lays it in and a foul. Ray J. Dennis into double figures. Ray J. Based on the lineup that was on the floor, he had just hit a three in the corner. Ray J. Dennis was going to get the ball. Great job of splitting the ball screen. Avoided the contact enough. The defender still moving to his left a little bit. Good call there. Defender still sliding to his left. Didn't quite get set before Ray J. Dennis had left the floor. Chance for the three-point play. And able to knock down the free throw again. A little bit of an unconventional miss. To the rim. Jacobs reverse layups up and in. And I almost think Toledo was caught off guard by how badly that free throw was missed. They had no balance defensively in transition. And Malik Jacobs made a pay for it. Ray J. Dennis is 76% free throw shooter. Fadeaway jumper. Ooh. Ray J. Dennis has that shot. He 
he's got 13. That is just years and years of putting in time in the gym, working on that move over and over and over. You see the guys playing at the next level that are getting paid millions of dollars that are really good at that shot. You don't see somebody in college too often that has mastered that. It is just impressive to watch. Dirk Nowitzki style as Jacobs attacks the rim and Peyton the follow jam. Peyton. Seven for Peyton. Penn State getting everything they want going to the basket. AJ Du came over to block the shot. Nobody accounted for his man on the rebound. Chris Payton got a wide open free run at it with a big time follow dunk. Seems like every time Toledo's tried to make a little bit of a run in this game, Kent State has had an answer. And there it is. Into the bonus. Sincere carry just fouled by Ray J. Dennis. And with 12 minutes left, Toledo's going to go to the line. You see here Malik Jacobs driving to the rim. A.J. Adu steps up. Nobody slides over to account for his man. Anytime somebody goes to block the shot, you got to account for the guy that the shot blocker was guarding. And that time, Chris Payton just had a free run, but you mentioned it. 12 minutes left in this game. Going to the free throw line and the bonus the rest of the way. And that's that's a bad foul because it's 30 feet from the basket. There's just no need to reach in right there. Just giving points away. Exactly. When you've got Toledo teetering a little bit on the ropes, just giving points away. Kent State has played really good defense. They just have fouled too much. It's as simple as that. When they haven't fouled, they've done a great job of being able to stop the Rockets. And Ray J. Dennis has come alive. Makes two here. He's up to 15 points now. And Toledo back to within four as we come up on 12 minutes to go. Jacobs attacking the rim again. Into the corner, Jalen Sullinger, the three. It's good! It has been all Malik Jacobs with a dribble penetration that has gotten Kent State great looks in this basketball game. Again, just a little side ball screen. Jalen Sullinger wide open in the corner. Malik Jacobs drawing so much attention. That time did a great job kicking it out. Lost the start finish. In the double figures with 10. Toledo's going to have to find an answer to try to stop this dribble penetration. They are just getting way too extended defensively. And Malik Jacobs is not a great three-point shooter. So maybe give him a little bit of space. Just try to force him to take a tough jump shot instead of letting him get in the lane. Just sag a little bit on this ball screen action. In nine minutes of the second half, Kent State has 25 points. A huge number in that amount of time. In that time, Cedric Miller did a great job forcing the jump shot that got the stop. Shoemate closed out on. Wide open three. Raheem Moss takes a dribble and shoots it way off. An air ball, but Dennis puts it in. It's amazing. We've seen it twice now in this basketball game. The air ball, nine times out of ten, goes to the offensive player. Defense is looking to try to see where it's going to bounce off. Falls right into the hands. All of a sudden, we're back to a three-point game. Raheem thought it was a pass. He wants the assist. Nice feed inside for Jacobs. Kicks it out. Sullinger, big three. Horn beats the tip. Cleared by Milner. Rockets can tie with a three coming up on midway through the second half. Dennis gets going downhill. Kicks it out. Maddox, the three for the tie. It's blocked. Shoemate puts it in. Back to a one-point lead where we were at halftime. Kent State wants a timeout. DP, what's better than this? Cleveland's rocking. 60 to 59, Kent State with the lead. Under 10 to go. This is what you play for. This is what you dream of. Heard your both practice. Everything streaming live on the ESPN app. Toledo looking to go for the daily double. Toledo women won the MAC earlier today, 73-58 over Bowling Green. They've won 16 games in a row, and maybe we should call it the triple crown. Toledo also won the football championship in the MAC this year, going for the clean sweep. Carey wide open three. He got it. Good set play out of the timeout. Great set play. Got the ball inside space. Sincere carry away opposite. Toledo just a little too slow on the rotation there. And a huge three to open this game back up a little bit. Carry up to 17. 
to lead the Golden Flashes. Nice cut by Dennis, who missed the layup and then tipped it in somehow. How in the world did he do that back in? Put a little bit too much side spin on it initially and got just enough of a fingertip on there. Just a big time play. Back to back big time plays by big time players in the back. Kent State continues to lead the way, grimming, ho grimly holding on to the lead throughout the second half. Oh, Carey's trapped. He hit the midline, the center court stripe, and it's an over and back violation. Toledo chance to tie or take the lead. Timeout. 8.48 to go. Kent State coming out of the timeout, getting the ball inside, playing inside out basketball. Sincere Carey knocking down the three. Kent State trying to hang on. But Kent State has led for the entire second half. You see both Carey and Dennis picking up the pace in the second half. Dennis with 13 since halftime. Toledo can tie or take the lead here. They haven't led since there was 30 seconds left in the first half. Kent State led by as much as seven in the second half, but have not been headed at any point. Here's Maddox. Fadeaway jumper. Peyton clears the glass. Tough shot there by Dante Maddox. Good defense there by Jalen Solinger forcing the fadeaway. Jacobs goes to the ground for it. Seven to shoot. Carey one on one with Moss. Carey is fouled with three on the shot clock. And it's only the third foul against Toledo. Moss his second. It looked like Toledo was in a little bit of a matchup type zone or just switching man to man, just kind of passing everything off to one another. Did a pretty good job there for about the first 25 seconds, but. Just got broken down again by the dribble penetration. Just have not been able to find a way to keep Kent State out of the lane off the dribble on the defensive end. Myron Thomas back in for Kent State. Peyton driving to the rim. Peyton strong move. Peyton strong move is right. That is a big time play there by Chris Peyton. Just said, you know what? I'm going to put my head down and get to the rim. Whatever happens, happens. And that was just pure strength right there with a good finish at the basket. Averages six a game. He's got nine. Inside Shoemate, still very quiet today. Good catch by Milner. Ten on the shot clock. Offensive foul, Cedric Milner. Sends us to another timeout. Under eight to go. Good one here in Cleveland. Winner goes to the big dance. Chris Payton. All right, thanks, guys. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to the finish here. Kent State leads Toledo by four. What's at stake? A trip to the NCAA tournament. The loser goes home. The intensity in these one bid leagues for these kids just winning that title and going to the tournament as a double digit seed, losing by 40 or being St. Peter's. Chris Payton, hello. Kent State takes a six point lead. That was ferocious. Whether or not Kent State wins this basketball game, I have a feeling we're going to see that one on Sports Center later on tonight. My goodness. Dennis looking to get downhill. Fadeaway jumper rolls in. 21 for Dennis. Chris Payton has asserted himself. But Ray J. Dennis on the other end, right back with the answer. Two points is worth two points. Going to quiet this crowd a little bit. Just to get to the tournament means so much to these players, regardless of what happens when they get into the field of 68. Well, every possession is just so magnified and so important. Just cannot have any mental lapses of any kind on the defensive end of the court or offense. Blocking foul. I think it's Malik Jacobs. I think that'll be his fourth. Well, the... Athletic display of Chris Payton has been on display numerous times in this game, but nothing quite like that. Going downhill to his left, coming back with the right. Just an unbelievable job of attacking the rim. Mm. That is a big time, big time play there by Chris Payton. Correction, the foul was on Toledo's Raheem Moss. It's his third. Kent State in the gold jerseys, Toledo in the white. Kent State is led for the entire second half. Sincere carry. Tough shot, he's fouled. Maddox the foul, it's his second, it'll put Carey at the line. 
Both teams have been doing a great job of challenging jump shots throughout this entire game. Finally caught up to him, and that time just a little bit too much contact. Sincere Carey going to the free throw line here. Toledo just has not been able to find a groove defensively. Kent State shooting 67% in the second mm. half. Big, big reason why they are up four. The Sincere Carey chance to open this up even more. Mostly at the rim. Which is how you shoot 64% and a half. No question. The dribble penetration has just been an absolute killer. Toledo has just not been able to contain the ball and keep it out of the lane. The quickness of the guards out front for Kent State has just been a problem for Toledo to try to match up with. Sincere carry. Makes two. Toledo's got to make a push. They've got to start getting some stops. Kent State has now scored 34 points this half in 14 minutes, less than 14 minutes. Lost the three. Rebounded on the weak side by Jacobs. Running the floor. Peyton, look out! There's players on the court. Timeout. Toledo. Toledo. Malik Jacobs, easy two on the break. Kent State with all the momentum here over the last few minutes, but Toledo, a team that's very composed, six minutes left in this basketball game, a lot of time. How do they turn that momentum around? Well, it's got to be on the defensive end of the court. Kent State has just been able to convert offensively with anything they've tried to do. So maybe look to pick up full court, try to force a couple of steals, get some turnovers, some easy ones. But it's going to have to start on the defensive end. And a great start there by Ray J. Dennis. Maybe look to pick up a little bit here, but they're just going to have to pick up their defensive intensity. they got to get put together two or three stops in a row. Just chip away at it. Six-point game, plenty of time. Just one stop at a time. Dennis has 17 here in the second half. Jacobs guarded well by Shoemate. Very well. Three on the shot clock. Sullinger, desperation three. Air ball. And a shot clock violation. Toledo gets the stop. JT Shoemate did a great job there. One-on-one -on -one defense. Didn't force the help. Therefore, the rest of Toledo was able to stay home on the shooters. Forced a tough shot there. And Toledo, a couple times throughout this basketball game, got down 11 there in the first half. Find a way to, came by, to come back. See if they have enough left in the tank here over these last five minutes. Chance to make this a one-possession game here. It's been all Ray J. Dennis in the second half. He gets going downhill again. He floats it up and scores. Ray J. Dennis, 25 points. Score, stop, score. That's the motto. Score, stop, score. He's got 19 in the second half. Terry looking to answer with under five minutes to go. Myron Thomas, a big three. Offensive rebound, Jacobs in a foul. Malik Jacobs, how valuable has he been? We, we talked several times throughout this game about how important the backboard was. We knew Toledo was going to have to take care of the defensive rebounding. This time they got burned on it. Malik Jacobs, who has been the most important player for Kent State in this game, has done it all. Now has a double-double, that being his 10th rebound, 16 points, 6 assists. He has been a one-man unstoppable force for Rob Senderoff's team. You can tell he's kind of the emotional heartbeat of this team. He's got 11 points in the second half, and he extends the lead back out to seven with under five minutes to go. Toledo trying to rally for its first NCAA appearance in 43 years. They've won 17 games in a row, coming in the longest winning streak in the country. Kent State has won five in a row. Nice pass down low. Hesitation. Milner missed the layup. Rebounded by Kent State in the foul. That's going to put Kent State at the line. Cedric Milner got a pretty good look there. Just was unable to convert. But Kent State's size around the rim may have altered that shot a little bit. Farmer comes in from Moss, who just picked up his fourth foul. I believe it'll be Chris Payton going to the free throw line. He's a 65% free throw shooter. You see Toledo's winning streak. They have not lost 
since they played Kent State over two months ago. They've got a rally here. Down by seven with Peyton at the line for one and one. Made that one look pretty good. And it's, we talked about it early on in the game. These two teams have only played once this year. It was two months ago, like you mentioned. It was Toledo's last loss. But dating back to last season, Kent State has won three in a row in this series. Continuing that confidence. See a miss there by Peyton. But Kent State just seems to have a little bit of an answer anytime Toledo tries to make a little bit of a run here. You can tell Kent State's a very emotionally high team. They're not afraid. Dennis scoring one on one, lost the ball. Kent State's got it. Chance to blow the roof off here. It's Sullinger for three. Robert David. All right, thanks, guys. We've got a good one here. Kent State has opened up its biggest lead of the game, 11 points. Toledo down 11 with the ball. Robert Lee, David Packett, our entire ESPN crew with you from Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse in Cleveland, Ohio. Winner goes to the NCAA tournament. Toledo trying to do so for the first time in 43 years. It's a foul. It'll put Maddox at the line. Foul is caught on Peyton, I believe, and that'll be his fourth. Kent State has not gone in six years. We've got to talk about it. Kent State is playing in the championship game for a second straight season. Last year, they won the semifinal game. They set up a final against Akron. A video surfaced on social media. It was profane about Akron. Kent State had four players suspended for the first half of the title game, including Malik Jacobs, their second best player. It went completely awry. Akron got out to a big lead. They ended up winning by 20. Rob Senderoff said that has been motivation, the way they finished last year throughout the offseason to get back to this point. It certainly seems like they've used that motivation properly. They have looked incredible tonight in this basketball game. And Toledo having to pick up full court here, forcing the turnover. Raheem Moss, who was a big-time football recruit, comes up with the interception there. And he'll go to the line after the foul on Sullinger. Kent State cannot get carried away and start celebrating too early. There is a lifetime left in this basketball game. And just not a great job at all handling that full court pressure. And Raheem Moss was going to make the steal. And Jalen Sullinger coming in with the foul. So... Only three or four seconds went off the clock there, and now all of a sudden Toledo's back at the free throw line, trying to cut into this lead just a little bit. This will be one and one for Moss. Toledo needs every point it can get now. Moss was a linebacker and a quarterback in high school. We'll cap off Champ Week tomorrow with two more championship games on ESPN and the app. The SEC title game between Alabama and Texas A&M at 1 Eastern, noon Central. Then the final ticket, the American Championship game, Houston and Memphis. It's coming up tomorrow before the brackets are announced at 6 o'clock. 12 points now for Moss, quickly down to an 8-point lead. Much better job that time by Kent State to handle that 4 point pressure. Didn't try to do anything crazy, just kept it simple. And they're going to try to use all 30 seconds of this shot clock. Kent State has 43 points in the second half. They've been unstoppable offensively. Three to shoot. Shoemate guarding Carey. Rises for three. Oh, sincere Carey. Cold-blooded. That may end up being the dagger there. Pretty good defensive possession. JT Shoemate just got caught a little bit, backed up a little too much. Dennis can't answer. Malik Jacobs, who else the rebound? His 11th. Will they run time off the clock? Yes, they will. 2.40 to go. Dennis chasing Carey around like a little brother. Looks like my kid's in the yard. Wide open. Peyton. Scores! 13-point lead. Biggest of the game. Milner needs it. He got it. Big shot. Cedric Milner with 21. And Toledo uses its final timeout. Toledo. Rockets full timeout. We take a 30-second break. 2.20 to go. Kent State. Kent State has two. Kent State owns the possession arrow. 
Toledo shooting two the rest of the way. Kent State has one more one and one. Toledo has only eight fouls. They'll pick up full court pressure. They really can't afford to let Kent State score another point. It's only just over a shade of two minutes left. They're down by ten. Sullinger will just dribble out of traffic and hand it off to Sincere Carey. Playing keep away. 18 on the shot clock. We'll take it under two minutes to go. It is so hard to trap a guy like Sincere Carey. He's so quick with the basketball. He's done a great job of staying in the middle of the floor, not allowing himself to get trapped on the sideline. Carey down the lane, scoops it up and in! Toledo desperate, down by a dozen with under two to go. Shoemate. Dennis, a huge three. Weak side rebound for Toledo, and a foul. He'll stop the clock and put Toledo at the line. It has been all sincere carry here in this second half, making big play after big play when his team needed it most. This time just saw the lane open wide up, getting downhill. Kent State has now hung 50 points on the board in the second half. They're shooting 70% since halftime. That's the story of the game. And it is, it has been different guys for Kent State. It hasn't just been one guy. Sincere Carey's obviously had a huge game. But Malik Jacobs get close to a triple-double nearly. Mm. Already with a double-double, 17 points, 11 rebounds to go along with six assists. Chris Payton has made some huge plays. Jalen Solinger knocked out a huge three in the corner. Do you need a foul here. Yes, you do. With a minute 30 to go, you know, try to lengthen this game somehow, some way. Yeah, you can't afford to let them take another 25, 30 seconds off the clock at this point. Have to count on Kent State missing some free throws. Jalen Sullinger will go to the line. He hasn't taken a lot of free throws this year, but he is an 86% free throw shooter, 24 out of 28. You may remember his uncle, Jared Sullinger, was an All-American at Ohio State. That's his dad's brother. His dad's other brother, Julian, is the top assistant for Kent State. What's going through the mind of that Kent State bench right now and the coaching staff? They are thinking how long this last minute, 30 <laughs> seconds, is going to take to run off of that clock. <laughs> Ten points for Sullinger. He's got to defend without fouling, try not to give up any threes. Don't allow any second opportunities on offensive rebounds. Look at this defense on the perimeter. Milner, tough fadeaway jumper is good. Again, Toledo has no timeouts left. Milner with 23. They've got a foul here. Minute 15 to go. Carey lost it. Toledo will run four on two. Need a score. It's up to Maddox. He couldn't make it. And it's out of bounds to Kent State. That could have cut it to eight with a minute to go. Very fortunate there for Kent State off the turnover from Sincere Carey. Has not had many turnovers in this basketball game. Has done a good job of taking care of the basketball. Very fortunate that three didn't go down. And Double-digit lead here for Kent State. Over a minute to go. They trap carry and foul him. Ray J. Dennis the foul, his second. Sincere carry is four out of four from the free throw line tonight. He is an 80% free throw shooter. Obviously, it looks like Kent State's going to come out of here punching that ticket to the big dance next week. But Toledo, because of the outright regular season championship, they're an automatic qualifier, excuse me, qualifier for the NIT. So, obviously, not the, the, the goal that they had in mind. But nonetheless, they are a team come NIT next week that nobody is going to want to face. I mean, they are going to be a really, really tough out should they choose to play in the NIT. So, a lot left to play for for these Toledo Rockets. Obviously going to be a lot of disappointment tonight, but it's still an unbelievable season that they've had. 17-game winning streak, longest in the country. You mentioned it. Disappointing in here tonight, but still a lot of basketball left to play here over the next couple weeks. Crowd chanting MVP for Sincere Carey. 
He's up to 25 points in Joe Lunardi's bracketology this morning. He had Toledo as the MAC representative. He had them as the number 13 seed. Toledo's net ranking is 77. Kent State is 63 coming into today. They could get a 12 seed or maybe even better. 26 for Carey. Final minute, MAC championship. Shoemate. Milner tried to follow Jamie's foul. Sullinger his third. Kent State led by one at the half, but steadily forged ahead in the second half with a relentless offensive assault. 54 second half points for Kent State. Just couldn't be stopped. Give their defense credit, too. They did a very, very good job throughout the entire game of just not letting Toledo get anything easy offensively. They were... Flying around, challenging shots, being active with their hands, just did not allow Toledo to get into much of a rhythm throughout the course of the basketball game. And it seemed like every time Toledo tried to make a run, they just couldn't quite catch him and take the lead. Kent State had an answer every time. 25 for Milner. They've got a foul. They're trying to trap Sullinger. And a timeout. Timeout, Kent State as Sullinger was in trouble. With 43 seconds to go. Let's say for the sake of argument that Kent State wins this game. They're up 11 with 43 seconds. The bench knocking down a huge three. And if Kent State plays like this on both ends of the court, they are going to be a very, very difficult team to beat over the next week or so. And a foul. On Shoemate, who has just five points tonight. On the other side, you mentioned Toledo will go to the NIT next week. Certainly wasn't their goal. They wanted to break that drought. This team, this team, has, these players haven't lost 40 years plus in a row. And that was the code point Coach Kowalczyk made to us. But the fact remains, this was a golden opportunity for them to finally get to that NCAA tournament. It's just hard. It is so difficult. You know, it, you see all the time, there's just upsets and it, teams that are, you know, Finish eighth in their conference, win their tournament. They get, it's, just, it's so difficult to win three games in a row in three straight days. And Kent State has just been the better basketball team tonight. It's as simple as that. Toledo doesn't look like they're going to foul. There's only six on the shot clock. Sullinger floats it up in traffic and scores. Final 20 seconds. The countdown begins for the Golden Flashes. Moss the three. 13 seconds left. Dennis. Kent State's got it. Loses it. Maddox the three. And Kent State wins. No. A foul with one second to go. I'm not sure Todd Kowalczyk saw the foul. He's already walking in. Rob Senderoff in his 12th season with Kent State went to the NCAs with the Golden Flashes back in 17 has had them at the top of the league throughout his tenure 820 win seasons and in his third title game he's going to win his second MAC championship two free throws here for Jacobs sincere carry checks out of the game Got to think he'll be the MVP. One more free throw should be for the final score. Kent State wins the MAC championship 93 78, the final. State controls the second half and goes on to the big dance.